again with the bird chick, Sharon Seltzer, and I'll let her get started. Thanks, Holly. Um, this is this is a, a a general social media workshop. Um, I don't necessarily have a PowerPoint ready. I've tried to bring up some websites. What I envision this being is if you have a question, any question, it's not too stupid. Don't feel embarrassed. If I can answer it, I'll try. But I just wanted to do something where if you have a specific question about Twitter, about QR codes, maybe a few more questions about Facebook, what's Google Plus? Do I need to be on it? This is entirely for you to ask me questions and I will try to answer them as best I can on whether or not you need any of these things in this industry. So just start off, does any, yes, QR codes. Yes. Oh, okay. Um, let me grab something. Can you explain what QR codes are? I am going to do that. I'm, okay, so she asked a question about QR codes. Did everybody grab a copy of Birding Business when you came in? There should be some up front. We brought some extra ones. If you don't have a subscription to this magazine, go to birdingbusiness.com and sign up. It's free if you're in the nature retail industry, and it's the only publication for this industry. And there's an article in there, uh, written, actually it says me, but it's really more my husband's article. Um, but see this funny little box down in the bottom corner? That is a QR code. It's kind of like a barcode. There are some vendors here who have those on their products. And so what you can do is if you have an iPhone, uh, a Blackberry, or an Android, there is an app. There are actually several apps that you can download. And because most smartphones these days have the capability to take a picture, essentially what you do is you, uh, you are going to scan that barcode with your phone. And so after you scan that barcode with your phone, the app will process that information and it'll take you to a website. And the website will either have instructions on how to use that product, uh, sometimes it'll have a video. Uh, you'll see QR codes in People Magazine, and sometimes if you click on it, it'll take you to a commercial, or there will be special articles in there. It's just a way, a, a cool and interesting way for you to convey some more information to your customer. So let's say you have bird seed mixes in your store. You could put a QR code on that mix and have that go to a web page that shows pictures of the birds that are most likely to come to that. And so if you have a customer coming into the store and they see that QR code, they can quick go to that and it's like, oh wow, I don't get cardinals, chickadees. Oh, and I won't get grackles with this. And then, so it's just, it's a creative way to get people to find out more information about a specific product. Now, QR codes for your phone, are, they can be free or they can cost a little money and you get what you pay for, but there are some pretty decent ones that are free. Uh, it doesn't really cost anything for you either to make QR codes. As a matter of fact, this article tells you about where to go uh, to, and websites you can go to to create QR codes. But if you have a smartphone, um, one of the Hummingbird booths, I think it's the Stackable Hummingbird people, they have a, a QR code in their booth, and it even has a little hummingbird in the middle of the QR code. The guy that has the big faces in his booth, uh, to help explain some of his product, he has a QR code in his booth that you can take pictures of. So, uh, and QR stands for quick response. But you are, now that you know what QR codes are, you're gonna see them more and more. Uh, you may have already seen them for years on UPS and FedEx packages, but where I live, we're now seeing them on billboards. Restaurants will have them on there. And my husband, the other day with his iPhone, saw one for a restaurant called Chino Latino, and he took a picture and he looked down and he's like, hey, if we go to Chino Latino tonight, it's two for one drink specials. I mean, that's the kind of thing people are doing with these. Uh, there are apartment buildings in my neighborhood that now have QR codes on there, and so you can take a picture and find out what kind of units are available in their building. And you may think, oh, that's too advanced for me. For me, I'm not going to use it. Anyone who has a phone has this capability. And it's just another, it's a, you can get very creative with it in your store. You need, you need to go to, actually, let me check the exact website that you need to go to. Ch -ch -ch. 
All right. Just search the web for QR code generator, and a lot of sites will generate the images for you. But yeah, it even has a picture in here. Wingscape's bird cam has a QR code. So it's just, it's a creative way, and you can do interesting things with it. Uh, you could maybe put QR codes on your newsletter, and if somebody scans it, maybe they get, uh, it's an ad for a free two pound bag of seed, or it has a monthly reminder. You could have a QR code that is in your newsletter, and someone can click on it, and it gives tips for what birds to expect that month. And it gets that customer thinking, oh, I need to bulk up on my suet, it's November, or oh, it's May, hummingbirds are starting to arrive. So you can do things like that. It's just a creative way to get information to people. Does that make sense? If not, if you need more, if you have more questions, don't hesitate to ask. Yes? My guess is, is that in terms of using them, you've got to have a segment available with information so when they go to it, uh, they're getting specific information. The, the QR code on the cover of Birding Business Magazine just goes to our general magazine to get people to subscribe to it at this show. So, I mean, it, it can just go to your website, too. Yeah, yeah. It's And just look up QR code ideas. People are happy to write it. I mean, steal ideas from companies that are having success with this. But it's just, it's something we're going to see more and more, especially as more phones come out with better and better cameras. I would think the point and shoot camera industry is very unhappy right now. Why bother having just a camera if you can't send the phone instantly? Yes? Google Plus. Google Plus, what is it? Uh, Google Plus is Google.com's trying to take the Facebook niche. And so you can, you now, if you have a Gmail account, you will get, you can get your own profile. And what Google Plus has done is try to take things that people didn't like about Facebook, especially when it comes to privacy concerns, and change that so that you can manage your privacy. There's no way to create a separate business page in Google Plus yet. And here's another thing, and as someone who writes quite a bit online under the name of Bird Chick, you are not allowed to use a fake name on there. So with my Google Plus account, I can say Sharon Steitler, and then I have a line underneath that when someone clicks on it, that says, oh, this is Bird Chick, and I can say that. But I know a woman who does a lot of writing online for a lot of newspapers under the name Girl Scientist. When she put up her Google Plus account and used just the name Girl Scientist, they closed down her account. And they said, that's not a valid name to use. And she said, I don't want to use my actual name on Google Plus because sometimes I get hate mail and that's not something I want to do. And Google Plus was too bad. You can't use this account unless you're going to use your actual name. And what they're trying to do is prevent bullying online, you know, have people take responsibility for what they say. But it's, it, some people are having problems with that. And with that said, though, you can manage your privacy in a much better way. And let me see if I can bring up the internet here. Oh, no signal. Strange, strange, strange. Let me try. Yeah, can I go onto the internet here? Okay. I'm going to see if I can bring up uh, my Google Plus page on here. Uh, talk about Twitter. All right, I can talk about Twitter. Actually, not if I'm going to remember how to put in my password. <laughs> Okay, so when you go to Google, I'm just going to show you a basic way to do this. When you go to your Google search page, 
Up in the corner here, you have all these different options. Like you can search your Gmail account. You can do a search for specific news. Let's say you type in uh, Cardinals, and this will bring you up all the latest news. You can check for maps, videos. And then here you have this little corner that says plus you. Now because I'm not logged into my account, that, that's, anyone can go in here right now and open up their Google Plus account uh, if they know their password. But if you have a Google Plus thing, it'll have your name where it says plus you. So I'm going to go into here. We'll see how fast the internet is. You synced it with your MSN account? And, and actually what it does is it, I have set up so it sends to my cell phone number and then it sends to my Apologize. I'm not sure what's going to come up in the original stream, so if there's any profanity, I'm apologizing now. So <clears throat> this is my general Google Plus page. It's very similar to uh, a Facebook page. And on Facebook, you have lists. Google Plus creates circles. And so you can, as you follow people on Google Plus, you can put them into categories. And I tend to organize people based on how I know them in real life because I have a tough time remembering people out of context. So my peeps, these are close family and friends. Birding interests are people I know, like through this community, or people that I know when I go bird watching. Uh, I'd like to know more. These are people that I've mainly just met online, and I'm not sure if they're crazy or just quirky. So, you know, I just want to kind of find out what they're all about first. No clue are people that I really have absolutely no idea how I know you, but I want to kind of follow you in case you're someone uh, who's kind of cool. Bill people are people that I know uh, through my husband, and I have a couple of others like don't speak the language or you talk too much on the internet. <laughs> <clears throat> but anyway, so they have a stream, and so let's say I don't want to get the stream of everybody, so I'm going to go into my peeps, and so I can see here's, an, here's a little note here from Amy Hooper from Wild Bird Magazine, and so uh, she has a little article down here on, on Buddhist monks. So it's, that's, it's a social network right now. No one knows for sure exactly where Google Plus is going to go. It's very obvious Google Plus wants to take Facebook's place. People who use Google Plus right now really like it, but because... Not as many people are on Google Plus yet. You don't get quite the interaction. And plus, a lot of people already have a lot of photos and family and friends invested in Facebook. But Google Plus most likely is going to grow, and I'm sure eventually they're going to have a business component. But I don't think it's going to be the type of business component where you need to have a separate page on Facebook. I think they want you to take ownership. I think they want you to invest in having a personal brand. And so... You as a person, not only are you yourself, you are your business. And you will be able to divide it up between your personal and your business that way. Because let's say I want to, I'm going to type something up here into Google+. Plus. Hey. Oh, my haphazard ties. Giving. Okay, okay. Okay, so let's say I put something up here that, hey, I'm at Goldcrest and I'm on... Oh, I didn't actually just post that, did I? <laughs> let's find out. Let's hope... Uh, I was going to show you how to... Uh, oh, I already have a comment. I bet that did go to my page. <laughs> no, it didn't. Whew, okay. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so what I was going to, my intent to show you was how you could post something without it going out to everybody. So let's try this again. <laughs> okay, I'll just say I'm on drugs. Okay, so you want to put that out. You have the option. Right now it's defaulting going out publicly. 
it, that didn't just go out. The computer just refreshed because I didn't hit anything. But I have the option after I type that of having it go to specific lists. Let's just put drugs because it's going to. So, so I can add, I can do add more. So let's say I only want to send that to my circles. Or actually, let's just say I only want to send that to birding people and my peeps. And so therefore, it's not publicly. So only those two lists will get it. So you could eventually, if Google Plus grows as much as Google would like it to grow, uh, you could have just one page and then make up different status updates for family that only goes out to family and different status updates that only go out to customers. But it's not to that point yet. Um, right now, we're still trying to figure out who's going to be VHS and who's going to be Betamax. Uh, it's, and a lot of that's going to depend on the, fa the changes that Facebook has coming. So that's kind of a general overview of what Google Plus is. Do you need it for your business right now? No, I don't think so. Do you want it to try and do you want to check it out to try a new platform to connect with your family and friends? Sure, it's fun for doing that. It's very simple to set up, uh, and you definitely have much more privacy control. Not something you necessarily need for your business. That answer may change in three months if you have me, <laughs> but. We just need to see what Google Plus is going to do. Um, OK, somebody asked here about Twitter. Twitter is a platform uh, that it, it's designed for people to send messages and photos via text. Twitter is you send a message. It cannot be any more than 140 characters. And you have people that you follow, and you have people who follow you. And whenever you type something, it goes out to the people that follow you. And your goal is to have a lot of followers, and then uh, you know people will will forward on or retweet anything that you tweet. Twitter is a great platform for comedians because they can test out one-liners. Uh, Twitter is a great platform for news organizations. You find out a lot of news on Twitter before you find out news on major news stations. As a matter of fact, um, <clears throat> when Osama bin Laden was killed. There was buzz all over Twitter before uh, it was even announced that there was going to be a, uh, a press conference. And then when Obama said that there was going to be a press conference at 9 o'clock, for about an hour and a half before 9 o'clock, the buzz was crazy. And people said either Ob Osama bin Laden is dead or we've made contact with an alien life form. <laughs> and as it got closer to 9 o'clock, it was pretty much a given, confirmed Osama bin Laden is dead. So people on Twitter kind of already knew that. Now you do have a lot of false reporting. I mean, last night, uh, yesterday, we lost Steve Jobs, and um, that was reported on Twitter. And I didn't take that as confirmed because he's been reported dead on Twitter several times. But it's not an accurate thing, but it's definitely a way to find out news. A lot of people who take pictures of birds uh, post on Twitter. People love to look at photos on Twitter. Um, there are some bird stores who use it. There's a bird store, a Wild Birds Unlimited in Saratoga Springs. They use it like crazy. And uh, what she does is she'll post pictures of birds that are feeder. She'll uh, link to different articles. Um, <clears throat> she uh, she. She interacts a lot with other birders on Twitter, and that's the key to getting followers. If you just post and post and post on Twitter without interacting with anyone, you don't get a lot of feedback. But if you, uh, if you see other people that post photos and you forward those on, or even just sending them uh, a reply that says, oh, hey, that's a really great sparrow photo you got today, <clears throat> then you tend to get more followers. If you are not going to interact on Twitter, you don't need a Twitter account. If you're someone who enjoys texting and you enjoy being on social media and you can, you can interact on Twitter, because there are programs for you to interact on Twitter that you can get for your phone. TweetDeck is a very popular one. Uber Social is a very popular one. They help you manage lists. You can kind of divide people into different categories and kind of keep track of who you really want to interact with. But if you're not going to have time to interact with people on Twitter, don't worry about it. But um, if you're someone who does, I mean, it's a really fun tool. If I still had a bird store, what I would do is every time I got a shipment and there was something cool in there, I would take a picture of it and say, oh, look at this new hummingbird feeder we got today. Uh, Duncraft does a lot on Twitter. And I, I'm confident it's not Mike Dunn who's actually tweeting. I'm pretty sure it's, <laughs> he's hired someone to do it. But she'll link to, I assume it's a she, but that person will link to birding photos, link to news articles, 
uh, that person also keeps track of different birding blogs and will uh, forward on interesting birding articles from there. And they constantly will talk about specials and they'll mention uh, discounts and deals and sales. So Duncraft and the Wild Birds Unlimited in Saratoga Springs have both done really well with Twitter. But again, if you're not going to invest the time in interacting on it, just don't even bother with the Twitter account. You don't have to have a Twitter account. Yes? Yeah, she said she has a coach who advised her Twitter probably isn't the best for her because it can be a big time suck, especially if you're doing Facebook. You have to kind of pick your battles with what you're going to do. I, I'm kind of feeling that way a little bit with G+, Google+. I really like it, but it's like, how many more social media platforms do I need to get on board with? But um, some people find working with Twitter very easy to use. And it's, it depends on your comfort level. If you are someone who texts a lot, or you send text messages a lot, and you have a phone that has a good Twitter platform, it's something that, that just allows you to send a tweet very quickly. And I often find myself using it, especially if I'm waiting in line, because I can look and see what conversations my friends are having and, and reply there. So it just depends on the lifestyle that you have. If you have times where you can just kind of check in on your phone and stuff and give off a couple of one-liners, that's great. But if it's not something you're going to spend time with, yeah. You, you definitely pick your battles. It's a completely different world on Twitter than it is in Facebook. Yes? What do you think blogs? What do I think of blogs? Um, you know, years ago, blogs were the thing. But as our attention span has gotten smaller, and now that we have uh, more social media platforms, uh, blogs have changed. People don't blog as much. And what's really interesting is a lot of bloggers are joining forces because you've kind of saturated how many people are following your blog, and if you want to get more readers, you need to be on multi-author sites. Um, there's a really great birding one called 10,000 Birds. If you were ever going to consider some online advertising for a product or something like that, or if you wanted to, to do something like that, I would talk to 10,000 Birds. They get over 100,000 people visiting their site a month. They have people who write all over the world um, most of them are in North America, but they also um, have some people who blog about backyard birding stuff. I'm one of the people who do that. I even write for them because that's one of the few multi-author blogs where if I write for them, I'll actually get traffic to my website. But um, you don't have to have a blog. But what's interesting is that if you don't have a website or if you're not happy with how your website is managed right now, blogging is such an easy platform to use that if you go through WordPress, they have all these different themes and templates that you can create a really nice looking website for your store that is fairly easy for you to post updates, to post photos, to create pages for your website. So you can use blogging software to manage your bird store, but you don't have to use it as a traditional blog where you have to post something every day. Mm -hmm. So, like, my website is just a page. Mm -hmm. And I'm limited to what I can do. It's mostly, like, I can say more cats, you know, mm -hmm. or generalized things. It's not like I can just drop down anywhere. That type of thing. I'm not allowed to do that. So, a lot of, I'm like, I have a place where I can direct people to our Facebook page, or I've got a spot where I can take them to. Like, right now, I've got... Are you, are you happy with that? No, I don't like it. But it's not, it's can you not set up your own web page separately and link people to that? You can only link them to? I don't know. I guess I haven't approached them on doing something like that because they're real picky about how they do things. See, I, I, in that kind of situation, I would prefer to seek forgiveness rather than permission. And <laughs> just go ahead and create it. <laughs> But I mean, I, 
I don't know. That sounds like a tricky area. She's with a company where she can have a page on that website, but you can't have your own website page where you can have multiple pages. That's tricky. I would, I would definitely consider creating elsewhere. And I mean, you're doing it some with Facebook. And if they're letting you do Facebook, <clears throat> I don't see why you couldn't just create a redirect to your own personal web page using WordPress. Did you have a question? I'm just going to comment and suggest if what you suggested. It's, it's fairly easy to get your own website. It may not be easy to get some of the fun names that are out there anymore, but I mean, I would just redirect, and I would go ahead and do it without asking. And if they bring it up, say, well, I don't see how this is different than a Facebook page. And, and I, I, I would guess they probably wouldn't notice. I mean, as long as you're bringing in, I don't understand exactly how you're. Well, say what? Like our third department is part of a lumberyard store, I mean, it's, it's the country store, Okay. like we have a lumber yard, a hardware store, oh, okay. and, then, and then there's, they buy, they buy corn from, I mean, it's a farmer's Okay, I would, just, I would just try creating another page on the side and directing over to that and see what, if it's bringing in business, I don't see why they'd care. So, help you with WordPress. WordPress is a blogging platform. Like if you decide that you want to create a blog, you can go through WordPress.com, TypePad.com, uh, Blogspot.com, and these are all websites that are designed for you to create your own blog. Some are easier to use than others. Uh, WordPress is really nice because people create a lot of themes that are free, so you can download that and then it's like, okay, if you're going to have pages, these are all your pages that you can create here. So it's just, it's a way for you to design a website. And it's called blogging because that's where people got started by keeping these online web blogs and this is a way to make it look cooler. But a lot of people, like a lot of restaurants and pubs I know use, I, I can tell right away when I go to their website, like, oh, that's a WordPress theme. But it works well for them because one of my favorite pubs is a place called Merlin's Rest. And so they just use that. I mean, they have all their general information. Actually, let me see if I can just go to their website. That would be easier. Um, they can, you can keep things on the outside that are always the same, like your address. And then whenever you're having special events, that always uh, updates in the center. Yes. And it's just a little bit, and what's nice about it is you can manage it yourself. You don't have someone else that you have to call and say, hey, can you change this for me? So here's Merlin's Rest. And so this is a WordPress theme, and so they have their home, they're happening. These are all pages that you can create, and you manage it just like a blog. And so they just, they have the, the this is a permanent web page, but they just have it set up so that you can see what their regular events is. And this is just all done by using, and let me see if I can get into WordPress here, because it wouldn't go to my site. On internet. Okay, so this is the general WordPress page, and so I'm not even going to bother going into my area, but let's see. It's been a while since I've actually started a blog on here. I just want to make sure the pages haven't changed too much. And it may be too much for the Wi-Fi to ask for us. But, I mean, it has kind of a step-by-step -step guide to take you in there. Maybe what I'll do is I'll see if I can get in. You got a WordPress one? Yeah, it's, it's an easy, it's just a platform that, that it's, it makes it easier for you to make changes and redesigns to your website. Yes? Go to NebraskaOilAndLube.com would be an example of what you're trying to show. Nebraska oil, oil and lube. This better be a safe for work site. Safe one. Safe side. <laughs> there are two kinds of lube. This is a safe one. <laughs> yeah, this is a WordPress theme too. Right, but that, but that's information, just like you're talking about. Yeah, and so yeah, you can just. Just makes it easy for you to update all of your information and post it's, photos. It's, it's WordPress, but it's not a blog. Yes, yeah, it's WordPress, but yeah. So and you can pick. You show the drop-down menu and stuff on the top. Ah, here we go. 
So these are all different places that you can go on the website. And WordPress just makes it so that you can do that yourself. Yes? Storeblogs.com. Storeblogs is piggybacked on top of WordPress. 